Hello, I've got some things I want to talk to you today about. In fact, I've got way too much to talk about, and I may do something I've never done before, which is record two short episodes back to back, uh, because I don't want to dump all of this on you. Uh, in fact, their two topics are kind of unrelated. One is about um, emotions, and the other is about a new creation. And I think I'm going to start by talking about the new creation. The mystery of the gospel, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, according to uh, Colossians 1.27. Uh, the mystery um, the mystery of the gospel and it seems to me that the idea of Christ being in you and that when if any man be in Christ he's a new creation I think that that's something that's still a mystery to this day it doesn't seem to be understood very well uh, as as evidenced to me by the presentation of the gospel and by the uh, the rise of of the frequency of people asking questions like is it okay if I blank fill in the blank and still be a Christian can I still uh, can I play video games and be a Christian? Can I still can I smoke cigarettes or marijuana and still be a Christian? Can I be homosexual and still be a Christian? Can I uh, listen to rock music? Can I can I do these things and still be a believer? And and I'm gonna address those questions, um, but I'm not I'm not gonna hit them head on initially. I'm gonna lay some foundation work first to show you why those types of questions are a clear indication that uh, the person asking them just has no idea what the what the gospel is, what salvation is, what we're being saved from. The whole concept of an old man and a new man. A way you used to be before the cross and then the new man that you are after the cross. If you picture two people, I'm going to try to put a graphic up. Uh, one person on one side representing the old you. Uh, the new creation is on the other side and in between is a cross. Uh, the way the gospel is being presented now is the cross is solely the purvey of Jesus and what he accomplished on the cross. He died for all of our sins, therefore we just pass by, kind of genuflect as we go by, and uh, thank him for his work on the cross as we go around it and go into blessing and into eternal life. And the way we define that is problematic as well. Uh, the whole idea that that cross is your cross as much as it is his, and that that cross has a definite reason, a purpose, and that if you bypass that, you bypass the whole reason of the purpose of salvation to begin with, which is to transform you into that new man. Old things have to pass away, and behold, all things need to become new. <clears throat> Revelation 21.5 says, Then he that sat on the throne, Jesus said, Behold, I make all things new. All things new. And that's, I've got a whole list of scriptures here to, to just research the word new and you'll be amazed at all the things that God is into. There, there's a d definite distinction between the things that are old and the things that are new. And the transition point between the two, the thing that transforms the old into the new, the old things are passed away. We forget all those things which are behind and behold, we move forward toward the new. The, the thing that's in the middle is the cross and it's your cross. If any man would, would, would be my disciple, he must hate his life, take up his cross every day, and follow me. The cross is something you need to carry, and the whole purpose of it is to put to death the old man. And the old man is the one who's asking if they can still do this stuff and uh, still be a Christian. When you define salvation in terms of going to heaven, if you believe the right things, then your future is set. Therefore, what you do in the interim, now, between now and then, that's where the problem is. Uh, in that understanding. It makes no room for what you do now. What you do now is you praise and worship and thank God for all that he's given you. Uh, you thank him for his grace because you're a sinner and you can't help but sin. You have to sin, right? Because that's the way you're made and God knows that you're a sinner and he loves you anyways. That's the way it's presented. If you don't believe me, uh, um, you're not paying attention to, to Christian uh, teaching across the board. Calvinists, Arminians, it doesn't matter who you are, they're presenting the same basic believe and be saved gospel. Believe meaning uh, uh, believe in the right t things that Jesus did for you, believe in the right concepts, and then be saved meaning when you die you'll go to heaven forever even though apparently you don't deserve it. <clears throat> the whole idea that the gospel is geared toward putting to death who you are and making you new. <clears throat> Can I still play video? Can I still watch movies? Can I still do all these things that my flesh loves to do and still be saved? That only makes sense in the context of when I die, will I still go to heaven if I still fart around and do my own, make call my own shots, do my own thing, exercise my own will, strengthen my own will. The thing that's supposed to be hanging on the cross dying is the thing that we want to preserve and save and bless. And that's the way the gospel is being twisted into and presented as. It's to way, the way to bless who you are instead of hanging yourself on who you are on the cross to die. 
You've got to. That's the thing is it's not you're not that you're an evil hopeless sinner. There's elements of you that are problematic and there are elements of you that are good. The whole thing's got an expiration date on it. And that's the whole point. Everything here on this side of the cross is temporary. The gospel comes to deliver you from those things that have got that that stamp an expiration date on you. We're all going to die physically. And physical death is the last enemy. It's an enemy. And it's the what Jesus came to do is to overcome to defeat that. How's it go? Uh, have no fear, I have overcome the world. He's overcome death. He's over Physical death is an enemy that needed to be overcome, and he conquered it by raising, rising from the dead. The fact that Jesus rose from the dead is a common theme in all of the people that preach in the book of Acts. The early message of the gospel, the repent, and the kingdom of, get, the, of heaven is at hand. It's all couched around the, the thing that the, Peter was big on this. Um, Jesus came. He was God's son. You guys put him to death, but God glorified him by raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand. The resurrection of the dead is an integral part of the of the gospel according to the scripture. But you don't hear the resurrection of the dead talked about much, if at all, anymore. David Pawson understands the reality of it. It's the hope of the Old Testament and the New. If there's no resurrection, Paul said, then we are of all men most miserable. That getting your physical body back and putting your you so that you can live again on a physical earth, that where did that go? Where did that concept go? It's been replaced by drop this this robe of flesh and go live in heaven forever. But anything that's describes raising from the dead and living on the new earth is a physical. Jesus, when he rose from the dead, told uh, told Thomas, spirits don't have flesh and bone like you see me have. Here, touch me, touch me. See, I'm really here. Jesus was really here. He, he, he was brought back from the dead. Now he's going to live forever. That expiration date that I told you about. We need to go through the cross and through and onto the other side. And that's where eternal life is and that's where we live forever. That cross is the narrow gate that leads to life. Few there be that find it because especially nowadays, now that the iniquity abounds, then the love of the majority will grow cold. How does that say in Matthew? I think it's 24. The gospel has been repurposed in order to save the very man that needs to be put to death. And it's a, it's a very real death, and you need to relinquish that, you and I both. We need to get to the point where we pry our hands off of all the things that we like, all the things that we are, all the things that we want to keep doing and still be a Christian. Can I be a homosexual and still be a Christian? You should hear the way people dance around that. It's such a sensitive issue because people feel like they were born that way. I'm saying if you're born that way, it doesn't matter. If you're born straight or if you're born gay, if you who you like to sleep with, why that's even an issue is is bizarre to me. Either way, it's got to go on the cross. Either way, whoever you think you are, you're not God's not trying to enhance and strengthen that and bless it and let it live forever. He it's got to go through the cross. You have to let it go. Whatever you think you are, whatever your predilections are, whatever you whatever things you like to do, yeah, I like to have beer every now and then. It doesn't matter. Whether you're a complete teetotaler or whether you you're, you you have a problem with booze, wherever you fall on that spectrum, it doesn't matter. You've got to put yet yeah, that you've got to put you on the cross. You got to the old man has to die. I know it's not a pleasant message. It's the only route that leads to life. It's the only way to take that expiration date off of you. You got to offer your body a living sacrifice so that you can prove what the will of God is. Listen to this: Ephesians four twenty two through twenty four. That you put off concerning your former conduct the old man, which grows corrupt according to its deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, so that you put on the new man. Put on the new man. It's something you're supposed to do. Put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. When will you hear that preached? This is something you need to do. The old man. I don't think we have an idea of who the old man is. I think that we think that the old man is just a, a certain collection of our bad behaviors, or, the, or maybe we got a short temper, the things that we don't like about ourselves that we would change if we could. That's the old man. Uh, and the, the, new, the new man, we feel, I believe, is the good parts of us that we want God to keep and bless and enhance. The whole old man, that's all that flesh. All that flesh is the positives and the negatives. It's all the old man. That's what the law governs. The law governs that. That's the spirit. That's the letter of the law. The spirit. You need to be born again of the spirit. See, there's this transition point where that cross is. The cross is the issue. Repentance, hanging yourself voluntarily up on that cross so that you can die. 
And the way that plays out practically, so it's not just a bunch of Christian talk, is at any given moment you've got a decision to make about what you do next in the next moment, in the next 60 seconds. Are you going to do what you want, or are you going to look to Jesus and find out what he wants you to do in the next 60 seconds? That takes who you are, what you like, what you don't like, your preferences, your predilections, your habits, your idiosyncrasies, all that stuff that micromanages and, and helps to dictate our, ju our, judges, our judgment, our decisions that we make. Each decision we make stems from a judgment, and that all comes from what goes on inside here, inside the old man. All of that conspires to help guide us as we put our foot every place that it goes as we travel through each day. When you put that whole dynamic on the cross and you get your marching orders from somebody else that you love and trust, and that you, that's the whole key, is that you have to trust that God knows what's best for you and that you don't. Because you don't. Because you and I are blind. But he came to give the blind sight so that we can see. The way that process plays out is over months and years of your life, as you keep deferring to his judgment, what would I do here, Lord? Don't judge by what you see. Jesus said, I, as I hear, I judge. He always does. He's, I always do the things that please my Father. He sent me to do works, and I'm supposed to do what he sent me to do. Jesus came with marching orders. Everything he did, he did because the Father was directing him. And we're supposed to live that life. Everywhere that we go, we're supposed to be directed by the Lord. And the way you do that is by hanging who you are on the cross and getting your directions from him every time there's a right now. And it's a hard road. And if you're balking at that, I don't blame you. It's a hard road. But that's the narrow gate that leads to life. And it's all over the scripture. To deny that and to say that the, the scripture is about, that the gospel is about saving who you are and blessing and enhancing it and finding its purpose in life and, and uh, helping to find your path in life. Purpose is all over the place. Rick Warren should be ashamed of himself. He's corrupted the gospel. That's a judgment on my part. I retract that. I'll leave Rick Warren in God's hands. Newness of life, Romans 6, 4. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. Jesus' death on that cross, we're buried in that. We're baptized into that death on the cross. And it's the same thing we talked about in that one video from, from Philippians, uh, that he, he didn't count his own connection to God as something to be grasped. He set that aside and he took on the form of a bondservant and he became obedient to the Father unto the point of death, even to the death of a cross. And then God glorified him and lifted him high above every name and every knee will bow, that kind of thing. We are baptized into that same death. We have to set ourselves aside. We have to take on the form of a bondservant and we have to be obedient unto, the form of, unto, the, unto death. We have to have our own garden of Gethsemane. It's got to happen. That's the whole, that's what the gospel is. You don't hear that preached. So either I'm out on, on, uh, on the, the, off the deep end and everyone else is right, or may, and maybe there's a strong delusion that's taken hold. We've turned the gospel into something that it's not. We've taken the cross out of it, the personal cross. We've got, and look at this. Let me finish the verse here. We were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should also walk in newness of life on the other side of that cross. That cross is not forever. You don't hang there forever. It's a gateway that you pass through to get to where life begins, to get to where eternal life is. That process of, trans of, of going, passing through that gate takes that, that um, the expiration date off of you. 2 Corinthians 3.6, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant. So you've got the old covenant, you've got the new. It says in Hebrews that the old, when it, begins, when it gets that label as old, it means it's passing away and it's not long for this world and that there's something new and better. The old covenant dealt with your flesh, dealt with the man. The new covenant deals with your spirit and with eternal life. The transition between the two was the cross of Christ, and that's our cross too. That's the transition from the old covenant to the new. The cross, the offering was made, the blood the sprinkled, and now we can come before him to get grace to help us in time of need. Help us to do what? Help us to serve him, to hear him, and to, to follow him. And it's a death. And every part of you needs to die. The part that likes to drink beer every now and then, the part that thinks it's homosexual, the part that, that wants to go to movies and do all the fleshly things that we like to do, the things that maybe are harmful, harmless in and of themselves, it doesn't matter where it falls on the harmlessness scale or the, or the problem scale. All of it has to be put onto the cross to die, like a seed. That death has to happen, and then what's life starts on the other side of that. 
So you can dance around the questions of, can I still do this and that, and, or be this and that, and still be a Christian? You're looking at the scripture, you're looking at the gospels in terms of going to heaven. Heaven is not the issue. What's going on in here is the issue. This is where the salvation, this is, Christ needs to be formed in you. Remember the way we started, the mystery of the gospel? Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's what the mystery of the gospel is. Having Christ formed in you, and you become that new man. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are, are become new. Romans 7, 6, But now we have been delivered from the law, having died to what we were held by. These things hold us, and the law governs that. When you're in the flesh, the law governs you, and you're, 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 you're a slave to it. So that we should serve... Here's Romans 7, 6, But now we have been delivered from the law, having died to what we were held by, so that we should serve in the newness of the Spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Notice the word serve. It's still involved in the new. You don't leave service behind. You're a slave to sin. You're a slave to righteousness. You're a slave to one or the other. One leads to life. The other leads to the grave. I'm going to finish with, with another stretch from Philippians. I heard... Um, Rick Warren do a series on how to, how to find happiness in life, and he preached out of Philippians. I laughed. Of all the books to try to preach happiness out of, Philippians is not the choice. <laughs> Philippians 3, 7 through 11, But what things were gained to me, these I counted loss for Christ. So Paul is saying, even the things that I thought were a benefit in my life before I met him, I had to count that as a loss. All of it. Even the things that are a benefit to me. Yet indeed, I count all things as loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. All things he counted as. He's willing to trade everything that made up him. All of his accomplishments, all of his, anything that had to do with inside who he was, he said, I'm going to trade all of that in exchange for knowing Jesus Christ, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish. Hmm that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead." Paul is setting himself up as an example. Count everything as lost. Forgetting those things which are behind, he says later on, and pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Laying hold of that for which I have been laid hold of. The new creation is the goal. That's what Christ will live in, in his kingdom forever. And together you will rule his creation. Rule. That has to do with judgment which has to do with emotions, which we will cover in another video. I'm hoping that uh, helps. Uh, the stress on today on, on keeping alive the old man and blessing it and giving it purpose is just killing the church. It's killing it. No wonder, people, no wonder churches are closing at a record pace. People are leaving because there's no substance there. It's God loves me on this side of the cross so much that he died so that I don't have to change. He can just cover me with his grace and bless me and take me into to be close to him because he just loves me so much even though I'm a sinner. Uh, there's no logic in that. I mean, where's your brain? That's the only thing you can... That you believe that if, you're, if emotions overrule your brain, on, if that's the way you live. Because you, you're, you're into the love and the, the happiness and the giddiness and the, and the, the emotions blind us. Emotions blind us to the truth. They're not evil. They need to be under self-control. Self we'll talk about that another time. All right, I'm going to end now. And maybe I'll record another one. Maybe I won't because it's an oven in here, and I'm not sure I can think straight for very much longer. So I'll talk to you in the next video. Thanks. Take care.